Welcome to Spirit Alive. I'm Roma Fisher. This is my wonderful wife, Anita, for 33 years now. And we, we've been in ministry for 30 years. And so we're celebrating 30 years of ministry, actually. And so uh, Merry Christmas to everybody. And uh, we thank God for our partners and friends. Yes, thank you, partners and friends, for supporting us all year round. And I know we, we received many nice greetings from you on our 30th um, anniversary of ministry. So thank you so much for that. And on behalf of all of our staff and volunteers here, we just want to uh, extend the best Christmas greetings to you. Uh, may you be blessed, you and your families, and have a great time together. And Merry Christmas to all, and uh, we'll be right back during the program to pray with you. God bless you. And I know I understand there's people, there's a lot of complaining going on with the COVID, with the masks. It's God's will that we're that we're that we get happy no matter what happens in our lives. God doesn't want you to be in the dark concerning His will, and, and there's people walking around needlessly, not knowing what the will of God is for their lives. Hello, viewers and partners. Contact our Spirit Alive helpline during our Sunday broadcast times. Counselors at the phones, ready to assist you with your spiritual needs, and we're here to pray with you. We're also here to provide partner services. Call the helpline to donate to Spirit Alive, sign up for our newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually, learn more about this ministry and upcoming events. Call us to share a praise report and let us know how the program is helping you. Call us at 807-285-9945. That's 807-285-9945. We're excited to hear from you. Thanks again, generous partners and friends. Together we're sharing the spirit of faith. Be thankful in all circumstances. But this is God's will for you belong to Jesus Christ. And I know I understand there's people, there's a lot of complaining going on with the COVID, with the masks, <laughs> and all the, all the kind of stuff going on. I know you didn't complain this morning, but there's other people that are not here. They're the ones that complain. And uh, people just saying different things about everything, you know, going on. But it says, notice this in Thessalonians, it says, be thankful in all circumstances. We understand that these circumstances are being tough on everybody, uh, physically and, and just the social life that we've been having. A lot of disruptions going on in our lives. But it says, uh, to be thankful in these circumstances, whether it's a hard time or a bad time, the Bible says wants us to have a good attitude. Being thankful is having a good attitude and, and not to be a grumpy old person. It's God's will that we're that, we're, that we get happy no matter what happens in our lives, that we find a way to find ourselves happy. Now, if God told you to do, to do this, then it's, it's, it's possible for, for you to get happy. It's possible for you to smile and enjoy life, no matter what's going on. The toughest, even the toughest times that you're, enjoy, that's, you're going, that's confronting you today, the Bible says it's possible for you to get happy, and to be thankful. So be thankful for different things. You can always find something to be thankful for, but it's God's will. It's, it is God's will for us to be thankful. For, not for the sickness that's happening all over the world, not for the death that's going on. We aren't supposed to be thankful for all the disruptions. That's not what we're thankful for. We're thankful because God says to have a good attitude. Because God's in uh, control of our lives if we allow him to do that for us. So, uh, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17, I'm reading the New Living, New, uh, new um, um, what is this? Okay, let me just, I'm going to drop this to you guys. Ephesians 5 and 5, 17. I just sent you something there, um, Kendra. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. 
Ephesians 5.17, New Living Translation says, don't act thoughtlessly. So God wants you to use your head when it comes to finding his will. Start using your, your brain, your, your intellect, in terms of trying to research and understand about finding what God wants you to do. God doesn't want you to be in the dark concerning his will. And, and there's people walking around needlessly, not knowing what the will of God is for their lives. So we have two scriptures here that just tells us about the will of God. And uh, Ephesians 5.17, God, God wants you to think about what you're doing. God wants you to think about his will. What is his will? What is God's plan for your life? In Thunder Bay. What is this plan this year? What's this plan coming up in the fall? What, what, God, what does God want you to do? Where does he want you to go? And uh, who does he want you to be with? So those are important questions for everybody in, in every situation over here. So our idea this morning, what we want to bring across to you is that when we talk about God's will, what is it? Well, God's will is the perfect plan that he has designed for you. So well, we want to talk about God's will is his perfect plan. So God wants you to know his plan, his purposes for your life. And he's not hiding that plan from you. He's not trying to make it hard for you to find that plan. He wants you to know everything that he's planned for you. He has a way for us to find out about it. And he's given us his word and his Holy Spirit. And he's given other measures and other methods so that we can obtain what the plan of God is. Because that's why he says, don't act thoughtlessly. But understand what is the will of the Lord, what he, what he, what he wants you to do, Ephesians 5.17. So generally, you know, when we think about this, you have to ask yourself, have I ever considered what God's plan is for me today? What is it the plan is for me in different areas of my life? And so, uh, generally, everybody wants to know what the plan is. Everybody wants to know what God wants them to do or what, you know, what plan there, there are. Some people have never really set up a time or, or a way to find out what God's plan is for their lives. They, they just don't really care sometimes for some reason. When we think about the will of God, we think about this. What about all the evil things, the awful things that are going on right now around the will of God, around the world, around right here in our city? What about all the disturbances going around the world, even at this moment? Some people believe that everything going on in the world right now, or in your backyard, or in your city, that God willed it to happen, that it's God's responsibility. Some people think or teach that way. That everything happens is God's will. God is a sovereign God, and he'll do what he wants to do. And he doesn't, you know, you shouldn't be asking God these things. But there's a whole lot of stuff going on, and a lot of people consider that it's God's will for, for these evil things to happen. Is God's will, with all the racism in the city and around the world, is that God's will? Well, some people think it is. Other people... You know, you, you get these crazy thinking going on, and you, you get mixed up, and, and pretty soon you're, uh, you're really out in left field. Is it God's will for all the drug addictions and all the drug houses in the city? Is that God's will, that your child be stuck with drug addiction? Is that, is that God's will for pedophiles to be around? Uh, you know, we look at these things. There's all these awful things going on. And is it a God's will for some child to die at the age of five? It's not God's will. And uh, people say, well, how do you explain it? Well, we, if, we look, if you look at something, you'll understand what happens. You understand this, that you're, you know, um, we can be defenseless, especially without God in our lives, protecting us. Understand that? We, you can be defenseless. If you don't ask God, he's not going to come and just come in your life and do what he wants to do. The devil does that. We have to invite God in our lives to participate and come in your life. You know, that's why Psalm 91 spells this out. 
that if you live in the shelter of the Most High God, he said, I will save the Lord. You are my God. So he wants you to make confessions. He wants you to recite. He wants you to, to speak God's protection, God's you know, will come in your life. That's how it works. So sometimes people believe, uh, you know, are, are saying that the devil and God seemingly are working together these days. <laughs> he said, well, you know, okay, the devil did it, but, you know, it's God's will that it happened that way. So there's a whole pile of stuff that's happening in, in people's lives, and they're looking at things, and they think God is doing these things, so they're, they're defenseless in knowing how to pray how to get out of the, you know, the thing because they don't know whether God wants them to have this or not, whether it's a misfortune or something like that. So these evil things that's going on, some people think God, God, uh, God's sovereign will is involved in that. But uh, we, we need to see and look at the scriptures and see what the scripture says. So uh, everything going on is not the will of God. All the bad that's going on is not God's will. We're going to find out what the Bible says, you know, quickly. And we say, what is the will of God? God's will is found in the Bible. If we want to know God's will, you're going to have to do some work. You're going to have to do some study. You're going to have to read the Bible. Not just race through it so that you can claim that I read the Bible from cover to cover. You need to study the Bible. You know, so it takes time. It takes some effort. To set aside a time every day, maybe 15 minutes a day. If you take 15 minutes a day and read this, you'll, you'll read through the whole Bible in one year. Amen. Take 15 minutes a day, Amen. out of your time, you'll read this whole Bible in one year. Or you could, if you read faster, you, could do, you, know, you, could spend, you can do it in four months. <laughs> and, and, and just study and do other things as well. So, uh, God's will is found in the Bible. His word... Is his will. The word of God is the will of God. There is what we call the general will of God, and there is what they call a specific will of God. Number one, the general will. Number two, the specific will. And then you have your wife. No, no or your husband. No, you got the general will and you got the specific will. So the general will of God, we find by reading the Bible from cover to cover for every major, major thing or major detail of what God wants for his children. In 1 Peter says that God wants everyone to come to know Jesus. That's, that's, that's the general will of God. God wants everybody to be filled with his spirit. God wants to lead everyone by his spirit. Those are in the, in the scriptures. He wants you to listen to him. In the specific will of God, there's a general will, the specific will, is that we have to get the specific will by fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. That comes through constant prayer and meditation and understanding and walking with the, the Spirit. God has different, has different details for every one of us. For instance, God doesn't want, uh, you know, if there's a woman in the church here, and uh, I mean, this is to take, for example, we take two young people or two old people. Pastor Roman and Anita Fisher are celebrating 30 years of pastoral ministry in Thunder Bay. Thank you, partners and friends, for sending in your video greetings and messages of congratulations from across North America. Let's listen to those words of encouragement from our friends and partners. Hi, Pastor Roma and Sister Nita. I just want to congratulate you on 30 years of ministry. That is a long, long time. I'm, I mean, that's just a little bit older than me, but we're excited to be a part of that. And let me share with you this. It's been a blessing to have you a part of our ministry in our lives and just to see what happens in Thunder Bay, the impact you have in Thunder Bay, the excellence and integrity that you have there at uh, Faith City Church. Happy 30th anniversary. 
I trust you're enjoying the program and uh, thank God for our partners and friends and those that are working with us here at the center. We have a lot of great volunteers that make Spirit Alive work and this year we were able to open up a call center and uh, we call it the Spirit Alive Helpline. So if you need help today or you have questions about Spirit Alive, uh, our counselors are here to pray with you as well. So call us, we'd love to hear from you. We're gonna be right back after the program and to pray with you, so stay tuned. Hello viewers and partners. Contact our Spirit Alive helpline during our Sunday broadcast times. Counselors at the phones ready to assist you with your spiritual needs and we're here to pray with you. We're also here to provide partner services. Call the helpline to donate to Spirit Alive, sign up for our newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually, learn more about this ministry and upcoming events. Call us to share a praise report and let us know how the program is helping you. Call us at 807-285-9945. That's 807-285-9945. We're excited to hear from you. Thanks again, generous partners and friends. Together we're sharing the spirit of faith. The Spirit Alive Helpline has been open since May. Here are a few comments we have received from viewers and partners from across Canada. I'm so glad to hear the uplifting word. It helps all the bad feelings go away and it refreshes me. I'm thankful for the program. Kelly. I appreciate Pastor Roma's straightforward message. So easy to relate to. Nancy. Pastor Roma Fisher is doing a wonderful job of teaching First Nations people. I watch the program every week. Marjorie from Toronto. Miigwech to our partners. You're helping us share the spirit of faith across Canada. We thank God for you. Our partners and friends, we encourage our viewers to share with us how Spirit Alive is helping you. Please write us or call us. We are believing God with you. God doesn't want, uh, you know, if there's a woman in the church here, and uh, I mean, this is to take, for example, we take two young people or two old people. I'll look over here somewhere. <laughs> anyway, two older people and just one girl over there. You got seven boys and want to marry that one girl. He said, well, all seven say, that's God's will that I marry her. <laughs> well, she can't marry all seven men. And, and so, so, so it has to be some kind of will, God's will involved in there, maybe none of them. So what if she doesn't want to get married? <laughs> so there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a way. So, so um, God has, has ways for us. So God, if God didn't want uh, a certain person to marry somebody, or, you know, God will give you a choice. God say, okay, you can marry that person. If they want you to marry them, then you can marry them. <laughs> so, so you know, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know about you, but you have to take this seriously when you marry somebody, R right? You got to take it seriously who, who, you, who you're supposed to marry, and so you have to see what it says in the Word of God about marriage as after after a while too. So, for in the general will of God, as I mentioned, He wants you to be filled with the Spirit. He wants you to get saved. Those are just general will. God wants everybody to go to church. But not everybody goes to church because they say, no, I don't have to go to church. I can you know, it's, it's funny. In Ephesians chapter, Ephesians chapter 4, it talks about that, that God's will to send pastors. Pastors have churches. They have uh, fellowships. And God sent, it said God gave gifts unto men. Those are pastors and local fellowships where people go to. And people say, I don't have to. I don't need a pastor. I don't need a church. You can tell right away they're out of the will of God. Everybody needs one. It's humbling to have, have somebody speak to you every week, to speak into your life. It's not that easy to me to come here and tell you what to do as far as the will of God in that sense. You know what I'm saying? But it takes, it takes some, some people to be humble and to hear God, that God can speak to somebody for his will. That's how God works it. And uh, he says that these ministry gifts are there until, until Jesus comes. So some people decide that they don't need this anymore. Well, Jesus hasn't come here yet. 
So you don't, you, you're going to still need the local church. You're going to still need the pastor. So there's a lot of folks that go to this. Uh, you probably have relatives right at home right now or not somewhere. They don't, they don't want to go to church. They don't think they have to. They don't need to. But they, they do. They do. They haven't seen it. They don't want to see it. So there's, there's a will of God that's being missed out for people. So God's perfect plan God's will is his perfect plan and his will or your ideal li- his ideal life for you. His calling in ministry or your occupation in life. It could be your job or your career, your activities, your involvement in life. When it comes to the will of God, you know, you need to ask yourself, Lord, should I, sh- is, should I go to this university and take four years of college or university? Should I do this? Is that what... You want me to do? Is that your will? Can I do that? And the Lord will speak to you. Sometimes people don't listen because they just follow tradition. Because, well, my mother was a nurse, so I'll become a nurse. My dad, my dad was a doctor. And, oh, we have a long list of doctors. I want to be a doctor. My dad was a pastor, so I'll be a pastor. So that's not how it works. God will work in your life. Psalm 139 says that God has written a book and your name is in it. And he's detailed everything about what you should be doing. If you read Psalm 139, you'll see that there's, God has your name in there, and he's written out details. He said, you know every detail about my life, Psalm 39 says. So, in fact, you know, it's amazing that God already knows what you're going to ask him before you, you say something. That's, that's astounding. You know, your mind cannot understand this, how incredible God is, the vastness of the universe. What he made. God is awesome. He knows every detail about your life. He knows what's better for you than you do. He knows exactly what you need. So God's will is his perfect plan, his ideal. God's perfect will is his design for your life, his purpose, what he predetermined for our lives. Here in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 I'm reading the New Living Translation. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ. So we can do those good things he has planned for us long ago. So if you're looking for something exciting, God has something exciting for you. He's planned a good life for you. The scripture said God has planned a good life. He's predetermined something for us to do. If you're bored, it's because you're out of the will of God. People say, well, I'm bored. I know kids say that. How many people, you have kids that say, I'm bored. I'm bored. They can't sit still for a little while. They've got to be on the computer. Ah, you know. So we lost, they, the scientists are saying now, people have lost the ability to think for themselves, to sit quiet and listen. We're losing that very, very quickly, and that happens to kids and people because you just throw them a, uh, you know, uh, an iPad, that's what's wrong today. I mean, we're seeing this everywhere. I mean, that's fine right now, that, like this. Thank God they can do that. But they shouldn't be doing that all day long. Okay, so I'm teaching right now. I'm telling you something from God. You shouldn't be giving your kid an iPad 24 hours a day. Ernie, listen. Uh, <laughs> give me those iPads. A bucket of chicken would be better. So, uh, no, you know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm not trying to meddle. I'm just saying, you know, we need time to think. We're, we're giving kids, we're teaching kids, we're taking the way, you know. Uh, when we were kids, uh, we went out to play in the bush and use our imagination. Plen- we, we pretend we were Tarzan. <laughs> and got lots of injuries, lots, lots of scratches, right? But now... The kids, you know, they, they just get a video game and fight with somebody across the world. War games or something. I don't know what they do. I, I don't. I try to play some games with kids. I, they beat me so easily. <clears throat> so it's, it's tough playing with the kids. So when evil strikes, who's responsible? We talk about God's will. When bad things happen to good people, when, when bad just, things just happen, who's responsible? Is, is, is God responsible for that? Is the devil responsible for that? Is man responsible for that? 
Paul said Satan is the god of this world, and he can't interfere with God's plan for our lives if you let him. Some people ignorantly let the devil into their lives. Here's what Jesus said. Uh, uh, you know, over here, God's ultimate purpose in John 10:10, 10, 10, He says, "The thief's purpose is to steal, to kill, and destroy." If there's any stealing going on, any any killing going on, any destruction going on, it's the devil. The devil is doing that. He says, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Uh, I think uh, the Amplified says that you might enjoy life. Thank you for watching the program. We want to pray with you right now, all our friends, partners. If you're brand new to watching the program, welcome to Spirit Life Television. And so the Bible says that God provided a Savior for us, and His name is Jesus Christ. He died on that cross. He was put on that cross, and God laid our sins in all our pains and sicknesses and weaknesses upon Jesus. And he took that penalty on the cross. He became sin for us, the Bible says, that he, that he died uh, spiritually, physically, and he went down to, to the grave. And on the third day, he, was, he rose from the dead. And the, by the Bible says that the Holy Spirit went down and, and quickened, his, quickened his life, his body, his spirit, and he rose from the dead. And uh, he, he is sitting at the right hand of the Father right now. And he was seen by all the... Uh, uh, about 500, the Bible says, in one part of the Bible, that after he rose from the dead. So thank God for that. Now, we want to pray with you so that you can receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and as, as your Savior right now. We're going to pray right now. Wherever you are, yes. let's say this prayer. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I give you my life right now. I need a Savior. I surrender to you right now. I believe that I need you in the name of Jesus, Father. I accept him, your son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and my Savior. And according to your word, I am now born again. I am your child. So thank you for my salvation. Thank you that I'm now born again, that I'm saved. I have a brand new life. Thank you. All things are passed away. All things become new. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, you are now born again. You are now saved. Welcome to the family of God. And uh, we pray for every one of you that have sickness in your body. We're going to pray right now. My wife are going to uh, agree in faith to you. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, all our partner and friends that are sick in their body, I rebuke sickness, cancer. I rebuke heart disease, uh, blood sicknesses, diabetes, weakness in the body, yes. weakness in the muscles, muscle spasms, back problems, eye conditions, mm -hmm. stomach illnesses, blood disorders in the name of jesus spiritual problems we rebuke every spiritual problem every attack of the enemy we cover you with the blood of jesus we command you to be free right now yes. in the mighty name of jesus i pray the anointing of god will flow through these uh, uh, lines of uh, wherever you are in the name of jesus we pray salvation spirit soul and body in the name of Jesus, amen and amen, amen for healing and health. God bless you for your deliverance. We'll see you next time on Spirit Alive.